Hey fellow lab rats, this is Rebecca from the Lab Rat YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be discussing tumor markers as a part of our clinical chemistry lecture series. Okay, let's get started. So we've all heard of cancer. Uh, but what is its definition? So cancer is defined as a disease in which some cells in the body start to grow uncontrollably and spread to other parts of the body. It's currently the second leading cause of death in the United States, with death from cardiovascular disease being ranked at number one. It's estimated that one in seven people will develop cancer during their lifetime, with genetics and environmental exposures leading to the cause. In men, the most common types of cancer are of the prostate and of the lung, and in women, the lung and in the breast. A lot of this lecture is just gonna be memorizing terms. So the first term is oncology. So this is a branch of medicine that deals with the prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of cancer or tumors. Now a tumor is a new growth of tissue due to the uncontrolled proliferation of cells. Tumors can be defined as either being benign or being malignant. So benign tumors are not invasive to the surrounding tissues and are generally not as serious as those that are malignant. Malignant tumors are those that are invasive and can metastasize, meaning it goes into another tissue. In malignant tumors, there are two main types. So carcinoma, which is a malignancy that affects the epithelial tissues. So these are the tissues that form the main coverings of the body surfaces. They line the body cavities and organs and are the major tissue type in glands. Sarcoma is a malignant tumor type that affects the connective tissues. So these are the tissues that help to bind structures in the body together, form a framework and support for organs, and also store fat. This slide shows more terms that are also important to know regarding tumor marker testing. Angiogenesis is the development of new blood vessels. This process involves the migration, growth, and differentiation of endothelial cells, which line the, the inside wall of blood vessels. This plays a critical role in the growth of cancer because solid tumors need a blood supply if they are to grow beyond a few millimeters in size. Tumors can actually cause this blood supply to form by giving off chemical signals that stimulate an angiogenesis. Apoptosis is the programmed death of cells, which occurs as a normal and controlled part of an organism's growth or development. The loss of apoptotic control allows cancer cells to survive longer and gives more time for the accumulation of mutations. An oncogene is a gene that is a mutated form of a gene involved in normal cell growth. Oncogenes may cause the growth of cancer cells. Mutations in genes that become oncogenes can be inherited or caused by being exposed to substances in the environment that can cause cancer. A tumor suppressor gene, or anti-oncogene, is a gene that regulates a cell during cell division and replication. If the cell grows uncontrollably, it will result in cancer. When a tumor suppressor gene is mutated, it results in a loss or reduction in its function. A tumor marker is anything present in or produced by cancer cells or other cells of the body in response to cancer or certain benign conditions that provides information about a cancer, such as how aggressive it is, what kind of treatment it may respond to, or whether it is responding to treatment. We test various tumor markers in the clinical chemistry department of the laboratory. These markers are not sensitive or specific enough to be used for general population screening. So this is why they are not just tested on random people, only if the physician suspects that there is an issue. The Betts jones protein, uh, which is seen in the urine of patients with multiple myeloma, was the first tumor marker that was discovered. So what makes a good tumor marker test? So it needs to have a good analytical sensitivity and specificity. So it needs to be positive in the presence of the cancer and negative in the absence of the cancer. Meaning we don't want to tell people that they do not have cancer if they do have it. And we do not want to be telling people that they do not have cancer when they actually do have it. So it needs to have good accuracy and precision with a reasonable cost and turnaround time. It can't be so expensive that no one can afford it. And also it should be able to be performed reasonably quickly. So there are four main classes of tumor markers, which we will discuss in this lecture. So proteins and oncofetal antigens, hormones, enzymes, and steroid receptors. 
So let's talk about this first one, proteins and oncofetal antigens. So of the proteins and oncofetal antigens as tumor markers, the two that we'll be discussing are CEA and AFP. Carcinoembryonic antigen, or CEA, is an oncofetal antigen. Oncofetal antigens are proteins which are typically present only during fetal development, but are found in adults with certain kinds of cancer. Elevated CEA levels were initially used to detect colorectal cancer, but can be in other types of cancer in the breast, lung, and gastrointestinal tissues. CEA can also be elevated in non-cancerous conditions that affect the lung, liver, and colon. So you see how these tumor markers are not very specific. So like in a heart attack, right, the troponin level is going to be elevated, and we know that the heart is being affected because troponin is so specific for the heart. So these tumor markers are not specific to one tissue source or one type of cancer. Um, <clears throat> so now alpha fetoprotein or AFP can be elevated with cancer of the liver and germ cell tumors in the ovary and the testes. In utero, elevations of AFP in the mother's blood or amniotic fluid is associated with something called spina bifida. And this is a neural tube defect that affects the spine's development in, ut in utero. Three protein tumor markers are CA125, CA199, and CA153. CA125 elevations are primarily associated with ovarian cancer. HE4 is a newer biomarker for ovarian cancer, and alongside testing with CA125, help aid in the diagnosis of this cancer. CA199 can be elevated in pancreatic, gastric, and colon cancers, but can also be elevated in non-cancerous conditions like in gallstones and in, even in pancreatitis. CA153 can be elevated when a patient has metastatic breast cancer, but it can also be elevated in benign non-cancerous breast, ovarian, and endometrial conditions. So hormones as a tumor marker. So there are eutopic hormones and ectopic hormones that can be used as tumor markers. Eutopic hormones are those hormones that are secreted by tissues in normal states within the body. These hormones can be used as tumor markers because in certain cancers, they can be over secreted. So an example of this is calcitonin. So this is a normal hormone that is produced by the C cells in the thyroid gland. In medullary thyroid cancer, which is the cancer in the C cells of the thyroid, calcitonin is gonna be secreted in greater quantities. So this is a eutopic hormone uh, tumor marker. Now, ectopic hormones are those that are produced by malignant cancerous tissues that do not normally secrete that hormone. So example of this would be ACTH. So this is normally produced by the pituitary gland and parathyroid hormone, normally produced by the parathyroid gland. So these can be secreted by the lungs when they have tumors in them. Gastrin is a hormone that is produced by G cells in the lining of the stomach and upper small intestine. In Zollinger Ellison syndrome, which is a digestive disorder, tumors can arise in the pancreas and cause a secretion of gastrin. Also, also HCG. So this is a hormone that is secreted by the placenta during pregnancy, and it can be secreted unnaturally in tumor, tumors of the ovary and the testes. Enzymes can also be used as tumor markers. An increase in the activity of an enzyme can be seen in malignancy. Acid phosphatase can be increased in issues of the prostate, so in prostate cancer and benign prostate conditions. Alkaline phosphatase can be elevated in tumors of the gastrointestinal tract. CKBB can be elevated in prostate and stomach cancers. Uh, so you can read the rest of them here on this slide. So again, th these are not something that if they are elevated, you automatically assume cancer. So these are tests that in combination with the patient's clinical presentation and the physician's suspiciousness can help to aid in the diagnosis and treatment of the cancer. Prostate-specific antigen, or PSA, is a protein that is produced by both cancerous and non-cancerous tissues in the prostate. Um, and the prostate is a small gland that sits below the bladder in the men. Uh, so PSA is mostly found in semen, which also is produced in the prostate. Small amounts of PSA ordinarily circulate in the blood. The PSA test can detect high levels of PSA that may indicate the presence of prostate cancer. However, many other conditions, such as an enlarged or an inflamed prostate, can also increase PSA levels. Therefore, determining what a high PSA score means can be complicated. There are two forms of PSA that we test for, 
free PSA, so this is just PSA freely hanging out in the bloodstream, and elevations are often associated with benign conditions. Um, and then we also test for a complex PSA, which is PSA that is complex with an alpha-1 antichymotrypsin. Uh, so increased levels of this complex PSA are more suggestive of a cancerous condition of the prostate. A PSA level greater than 4 nanograms per milliliter should be followed up with a prostate exam and or a biopsy of the prostate gland. It was originally thought that PSA was only expressed by the epithelial cells within the prostate, but it can be produced by subnormal and malignant tissues in women. So for example, in hyperandrogenic syndromes like in Cushing's disease, PSA can be elevated. Cushing's is a disorder caused by the body's exposure to an excess of the hormone cortisol. Tumors of the breast can cause elevations of PSA and also those who are receiving testosterone administration. Steroid receptors are the last class of tumor markers that we're going to be discussing. So cancers of hormonally dependent tissues like the breast, testes, prostate, and uterus may use sex hormones to accelerate the growth of tumors. tumors. So suppression of these hormones may lead to the reduction of the malignancy. Steroid receptor assays done by immunohistochemistry testing can predict which tumors are most likely to respond to the manipulation of these hormones. There are receptor tests currently for estrogen, progesterone, and androgen receptors. The HER2 new protein test is a test that measures the amount of HER2 new protein or cancer cells, or how many copies of the HER2 new gene are in the DNA of cancer cells. So the HER2 new protein helps control normal cell growth. Larger than normal amounts of the HER2 new protein or too many copies of the HER2 new gene may be made by some types of cancer, including breast, ovarian, bladder, pancreatic, and stomach cancers. This may cause cancer cells to grow more quickly and spread to other parts of the body. A HER2 new test can be done to help plan treatment, which may include drugs like Herceptin that target the HER2 new protein. Alrighty, so that concludes our lecture on tumor markers. If this video helped you, go ahead and give it a like, and please make sure to subscribe to the LabRat YouTube channel for more educational uh, laboratory content. And as always, if you have questions about this lecture or have any suggestions on other videos you would like me to do on this channel, uh, please leave those in the comment section below. Until next time.